So we need a cup of sugar, but we're working on fractions today. So I'm going to pretend that I do not have any one cup measuring cups today. They don't exist. I do, however, have a half cup. Now, a half cup would mean that the cup is in two parts, and this is one out of two. So yell it at the screen. How many of these do I need to make one cup to make one whole? Two. That's right. So I'm going to do two half cups of sugar, which are going to equal then one whole cup of sugar. Two halves is a whole. There it is in my bowl. Then I have half a cup of shortening butter or margarine. As I said, I don't like to do all of all shortening or all butter. So I have my Crisco here, and I'm going to use half, half of a half. If I take one half of something and I cut it down the middle, that's going to make one fourth. So I'm going to want a fourth a cup of shortening. So we take that, scoop it in there, and then I get a knife, butter knife, butter knife, not a sharp one. And I scrape it off, scrape it so it's even, and now I'm going to put this in my bowl. Eventually. Close enough. <clears throat> okay. Now, for the butter. Butter, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but butter is actually already measured on the outside of the stick of butter. Did you know that? Each stick of butter equals one half cup. It's written, check it out. When look, at, look at one of your sticks of butter and look at it. Half of a stick of butter is a quarter cup and that's how much butter I want is a quarter cup but you'll see it's also broken down into tablespoons so when you're measuring tablespoons a tablespoon is one eighth no I, I apologize one sixteenth of a cup of a, of a pound one sixteenth of a cup so two tablespoons makes an eighth of a cup and here it's measured one tablespoon, two tablespoons, so I could just cut it. And then I know where my half cup is. So I'm going to take this. I already, oh yeah, you want to make sure your butter is soft <laughs> or you're not going to be able to mix it with anything. I cut it and then I'm going to put it here in my sugar. All right, so I'm going to mash up these bananas. I can use a fork if I have to, but I'm lucky enough. I have a pastry cutter, which is also pretty darn good for doing some mashing. And it keeps my hand from getting a little mucky. Oops, is there a dog that wants some of this banana that's on the floor? Look at it. I know, looks kind of gross. It's gonna be really, really numby though. Remember how in our recipe, it talked about adding the flour and the soda and the salt later? I kind of like to get that ready before I start mixing everything together so that I can just dump it in. You don't have to do it this way because it does make another bowl dirty and mom and dads might not so much like that unless you're promising to wash the dishes. But I'm going to put my flour, soda, and salt here in this bowl. Uh, the flour, it says two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Again, remember, I don't work with I don't have a one cup measuring cup today, so I need my half cup. Where is that half cup? Where is it? Quarter, third, here it is, half cup. So I need two and a half cups of all purpose flour. So to make two holes, I'm gonna need how many halves? I wanna make two holes. Each hole contains two halves, 
So that's two. And then four to have two holes. I need four halves plus I need one more half. So I'm going to need five half cups of flour in this bowl. One, two, three, four, five. Now, you might want to be a little bit more precise about that. Take a knife, scrape off the top. I've been baking for quite a while, so I'm pretty good at eyeballing it and making sure it's fairly level. Now I've got my flour. I need my baking soda, which is here, baking soda. Baking soda is one teaspoon. Did you know that three teaspoons equal one tablespoon? I could prove it. One, two, three, look at that, look at that. So a teaspoon is one third of a tablespoon. Now you know. I need one teaspoon of baking, so hey, baking soda in this dry bowl right here. And then salt. I usually don't measure my salt. Um, you can measure it. It says a half teaspoon of salt. I usually just take my salt and I do a pinch. And there's my salt. So now I have this. I can kind of stir it together a little bit to mix it up. But this is all ready for when I'm done blending the sugar and the shortening and butter. Then I have to add the bananas. Then I'm going to add this in. So we're going to start putting it all together. All right, so here I am with my mixer. If you are going to use a mixer, you need to make sure that you have a grown-up helping you because you get your fingers stuck in here and it's on. Aye, aye, aye. Not a good thing. Uh, or you can always use a spoon. It's a little more tedious, but it's safer. So I've got my mixer, got my butter, shortening, and sugar. So I'm going to start mixing. I'm not going to go too fast. And it says to mix until creamy. I'm trying to blend this all together. I don't know, it's kind of hard to have you see this and not have it all end up all over the floor. I started off slowly, now I'm picking up the speed here. And you're thinking, Madame Huda, how can sugar become creamy? Well, as the sugar blends with the fat from the shortening and the butter, it stops being quite so crystally and it kind of becomes part of the fatty stuff. This is probably pretty good. This is all mixed together, kind of like a Greasy, sweet um, Play-Doh. Okay, now I need to add in the bananas. Ooh, let me just double check and make sure I'm doing this right. Yes, add bananas and stir. One and a third cup of mashed bananas. Here is a third. To make one whole, I need how many thirds? Three thirds, very good. So I need three thirds plus one more third and my oven is having an issue just one moment there we go three thirds plus one more third that makes four thirds so one two three together but not very fast because my instructions say stir so I'm gonna do this at kind of a 
lower speed, mix it in together. Oh, that's my timer. I've got to go do something else and I'll finish up this recipe in a bit.